scanner darkly. This attitude of mine shows up in my recent novel, A Scanner Darkly, where uh, a narcotics agent winds up reporting on himself, turning over information on himself to, to his higher-ups. The uh, paranoia of the Nixon period was so great uh, by the government and also by the counterculture, the Berkeley people. Anybody like me who grew up and, and, and was part of the Berkeley counterculture became a marked man during the Nixon administration. A Scanner Darkly came from his uh, difficulties in his own life and his friends and family. The paranoia that they feel is that similar to the paranoia a lot of people are starting to feel just if you can't speak out, it seems even more important and relevant today than when we started um, in lieu of the current headlines, the administration and, and the surveillance that's sort of being carried out now. It is impossible to tell how much of our fears were justified. I mean, there were illegal entries. My, my house was broken into, my files were blown open, my, my papers were stolen. We never found out who did it. My attorney said it was the government. There was no doubt that it was the government. But what they were looking for, I don't know. What they thought I was doing, I don't know. I don't even know if it was the government. But uh, there were many such illegal entries. And uh, an experience like that tends to make you very paranoid, you know, that you are suspected of some crime. I think he was able to, to get his ideas across through through the genre of science fiction. Um, but I think it took him a long time to come to terms with, uh, with being in a genre that wasn't necessarily the most respected. The uh, position which writers such as myself hold in America are, those positions are very lowly. Uh, science fiction is considered to be something for adolescents, for just um, high school kids and for disturbed people in general to read in America. I guess we're officially in the genre of science fiction, but it didn't feel that way to me. It felt very contemporary and very uh, real world. So we are limited in our writing to books which have no sex, no violence, and no deep ideas just something of an adventure kind of nature, what we call space opera, which is just westerns set in the future. It doesn't really fit within the genre of the sort of Hollywood sci-fi spectacular. I felt like I had Phil K. Dick, his family, and then however many, I don't know how many million of fans out there who kind of feel a special relation, not only to him, but maybe this particular work. You feel like you have this weight on you that is, I felt great about it because I thought, you know, it's a little daunting, but I also felt like I was up for that challenge and I, I didn't think they would be disappointed at the end of the day. I think the screenplay's great, yeah, I do. I think I think the, the essence of, of the story is there. Um, a lot of the dialogue is there, which is great. There was a lot, there's a lot of humor in the book. I mean, there's some, some sadness and some pain. There's also a lot of humor, and he's kept a lot of that, that great dialogue and humor between the characters. Charles Freck, becoming progressively more and more depressed by what was happening to everyone he knew, decided finally to off himself. There was no problem in the circles where he hung out and putting an end to yourself. You just bought into a large quantity of reds and took them with some cheap wine late at night with the phone off the hook so that no one could interrupt you. The planning part had to do with the artifacts you wanted found on you by later archaeologists, so they'd know from which stratum you came, and also could piece together where your head had been at at the time you did it. He spent several days deciding on the artifacts, much longer than he spent deciding to kill himself, and approximately the same time required to get that many reds. He would be found lying on his back, on his bed, with a copy of Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead, which would prove he had been a misunderstood superman rejected by the masses, and so in a sense murdered by their scorn and an unfinished letter to Exxon protesting the cancellation of his gas credit card. That way he could indict the system and achieve something by his death over and above what the death itself achieved. Richard Linklater's adaptation, the director and writer, he wrote a really great adaptation, I felt, and representation of the book. 
Well, I thought it was probably the strangest script I've ever read. And, um, and I knew Keanu was doing it, and uh, Rick was directing, and I thought, all right, these guys are pretty smart and on a good roll. I wonder how this will turn out. Well, I was very confused by the script at first. I mean, it's, it's a bizarre kind of story, you know, with stories within stories that are really more to the point, you know, strange realities within strange, you know, nothing, you don't know what's real and what's illusion. It's one of the most challenging pieces of literature that I've ever read, both the book and uh, Richard's adaptation, the script. You know, Rick called me up and said, you know, I wrote this part for you. I mean, it's obviously written, but... The dead should, if possible, serve the purposes of the living. I said, I wanted to make this book. I think Philip K. Dick deserves a, a thorough adaptation of his work to tell the whole story, not just pluck a few ideas and do something else with it. I, I like this story, and to me, I always respond to it because it, it seemed very personal. I could tell just by reading this that, oh, this was his life. It had to be. I kept thinking, you know, I'll probably understand this better as, uh, as you know, the time goes yeah, on, but I was still confused. But Let's go, guys. Let's go kick some ass. I don't know how you prepare for something like this. Not so fast. You are flying. It's all right. Steady. It's all right. Slow down. Jesus. Son of a bitch. Hey. Come on. It's all right. We get, you know, I think we go right on action. Rick, uh, you know, he has an amazing... Uh, He's the most laid-back director I ever worked with. I never saw him even remotely get uptight about anything. He's still a tyrannical megalomaniac. Um, I wouldn't say like Adolf Hitler, but like Mussolini, something like that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I can only think of a couple other people who reminds me of like uh, Oliver Stone and Robert Altman, and that there's this incredible sense of uh, you really feel trusted and also you know at the end of every day you're just squoze dry and also he does encourage everybody to contribute and to try things oh it's funny yeah. you're doing it soft and conspiratorial yeah. and then you're like so he's got this big it. graph going on in his head kind of almost like uh, I don't know, like playing bingo or something where he kind of knows like where all the numbers are and how to do it. Well, let, no, let's, I'm going to see the positions, actually. He's just one of, the, one of the finest directors I've ever worked with. The detail and what he brings and the attitude he has, the way he sees them from an angle that most people wouldn't know exists. I can definitely sense that kind of college ball, like the real athletic mentality, a well-seasoned, you know, ball player, so that it's kind of like he'll say, like, you play like you practice, and, you know, a lot of his uh, terminology translates well into artistic endeavors, you know. Kind of under there, but no dialogue. I've got two kids, two girls, little ones. I don't believe you do. You're not supposed to. Maybe not. With Arctur, you know, he's, he's the family man. He's got a wife and kids. He's going down this kind of... Um, conceptual path of marriage and husband and father and he you know like he says he says I hate my life nothing would ever change this would never end and he's and there's something inside him where he can't he's not happy he breaks out of it you know, without regret oh I love Keanu I mean he I tried to I thought about this several years ago I was seeing if he would be available I think he was right in the middle of matrix land at that point